and welcome to your yoga practice. Today we're going to practice jumping from downward facing dog to forward fold and not necessarily jumping but different ways that we can travel from downward facing dog to forward fold. And if you do find air today, awesome. If you don't, awesome. I'm actually going to be facing the side of my mat that's closer to the wall, just in case I find a little too much air. Um, it's still kind of scary when you're flying like that. So I'm definitely not one of those people that can pop myself into a handstand, nor I don't know if I ever will be, and that is fine. So let's get ourselves started, shall we? And we'll come right into our downward facing dog. This is a 10 minute practice, so let's make the best out of it. So bringing your hands, but shoulders width distance apart, feet at about hips width distance apart. And just finding some grounding here. Really press your hands on the mat, spreading your fingers out. Take a look at your hands. Your wrist creases are close to parallel to the short edge of your mat. Your pointer finger or middle finger is pointing towards 12 o'clock. Some people like a little bit of um, out turning their hands. It depends on how your shoulders are set. Externally rotate those arms. So it's like your biceps are drawing towards the outside of your mat and the eyes of your elbows are facing forward. Allow your neck to be nice and relaxed. Shoulder blades draw up and back. And by up, I mean down the back. <laughs> Imagine that your body is in an upside down V and by imagining that maybe that starts to send your sit bones up towards the ceiling a little bit more. And then those heels, they do not need to ever reach the mat. If they do reach the mat, see what it feels like to lift those 10 toes. Hmm. And then from here, let's come on to our balls of our feet or our tiptoes and then start just tiptoeing those feet towards your hands and maybe even get on to the big toe. When you get close to your hands, see if you can give your wrists some little taps. Really press into your hands here, belly button towards your spine, and then release your feet. Grab onto opposite elbows, bending your knees, sway side to side. So we'll take plenty of little breaks because this will be a lot on your wrists and a lot on your shoulders. All right, we'll plant your hands down and then just step back into your downward facing dog. Awesome, so we'll do that again, the tiptoeing and tapping of the wrists. So come up onto your toes, inhale, and then through your exhale, start tiptoeing towards your wrists. Once you're close, start tapping your wrists. Maybe you tap more of your forearm and then plant those feet down, grab onto opposite elbows, generous bend in the knees, sway side to side. All right, so the next round, we're gonna pretend that we're gonna jump up. We won't do it quite yet. Plant your hands down, step back, downward facing duck. All right, and give your knees a little bend one at a time, walking your dog. Okay. Hmm. So we'll take this in little steps. Usually we inhale to look forward and then we'll exhale to travel, but we'll take a little bit longer. I won't cue the breath here since we are taking several steps. Come up onto your toes and then bend your knees, almost like you're crouching down and your chest and your belly are gonna touch your thighs. Almost like you're gonna pounce, look forward in between your hands. And then back into your downward facing dog. Again, coming up onto your toes and then crunch. Downward facing dog, let's see that again. Up onto your toes and crunch. 
and then downward facing dog. Awesome. All right, so the next time we are gonna try, we'll go toes, crouch, and then we'll jump forward. And as you jump forward, you can just step forward if you'd like. As you jump forward, imagine that your hips, your shoulders are stacking on top of your wrists, and then your hips are coming over your shoulders or close to it. <laughs> All right, coming up onto your toes, crouch, and then launch. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhaling, forward fold. And then just plant your hands down, come back into your downward facing dog. All right, and we'll do that again. And I invite you to try, just see what happens. And sometimes coming a little closer towards your hands is easier. Sometimes having your feet together so that way your legs are just this one package works. I like keeping my feet hip width distance apart personally. All right, let's try again. Inhaling up onto your toes, crouch, and then lock. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhaling, forward fold. Coming back into your downward facing dog. And there's different things to do with your legs. So you see that I did kind of like a pike with bent knees. You can also do more of an L shape. Just see what happens in your body as you do it. All right, again, inhaling up onto your toes, crouch. Exhaling to launch. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhaling, forward fold. And then starting to do this a little bit more fearlessly, maybe coming a little closer to the wall. That way, in case you do launch a little too much, you have something to catch you. Inhaling up onto your toes, crouch and launch. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhaling, forward fold. Coming back into your downward facing dog. And let's try that again. <sighs> All right. Inhaling up into your toes. Crouch and then exhale to launch. There we go. <laughs> Good thing the wall is right there. And then coming down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhaling forward fold. Then back into your downward facing dog. And I'm laughing because usually that does not happen. I usually don't make it all the way on top like that. So it was kind of cool. All right, so getting nice and close in case I do go over again. All right, finding your stance. And inhale up onto your toes, crouch, and then launch. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Stepping back, downward facing dog. All right. So we're going to try this two more times. Here goes the first attempt out of those two. So you can try with me. Hopefully you have been all along. Inhaling up onto your toes. Crouch and then launch. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhaling, forward fold. And then making your way back into your downward facing dog for our last try. And it doesn't have to be the best one, it's just the final one. All right, finding your hand placement, bring your belly button towards your spine, looking forward in between your hands, inhaling up onto your toes, crouch, and then launch. <laughs> Inhale, halfway lift, exhaling forward fold. And grabbing on to opposite elbows, swaying side to side. We are done with our jumps. Planting your hands down, finding your downward facing dog, and then knees up wide, toes to touch, child's pose. Maybe you make a pillow with your hands. Maybe you ask yourself, what just happened? What's really fun about playing like that is it just builds up your energy and it also works on your fearlessness. So maybe you are stepping forward the whole time and just imagining that you are flying. Maybe you are trying to fly. 
Um, and you saw mine. They were not super graceful. I was not getting that much air. Um, but it's just fun to try and to practice. And the only way we get better is if we grow and if we play and if we're okay with being silly. Let's come to a seat. Face the top of our mat or our screen. Bring your hands to your heart. Thank you so much for playing on the mat with me today. I hope that you enjoyed and that you have the most beautiful day. Bye.